100 million Naira reward has been offered to whoever can produce the leader of IPOP Namdi Kanu by a coalition of 75 northern groups under the aegis of the Northern Consensus Movement. And the 2021 Global Peace Index GPI ranking is out and Nigeria scores low globally and in the continent. This is Plus Politics, a Diane Mary Anacol. A coalition of 75 Northern groups under the aegis of the Northern Consensus Movement has declared wanted and has announced a reward of 100 million Naira for any persons who can produce for the constitution of his trial for alleged treason. We're talking about Namdi Kanu. The group accused Kanu and the Eastern Security Network of masterminding the recent spate of attacks on the Northern communities in the Southeast via what they call hate speech. Speaking on behalf of the coalition, Awal Abdullahi Aliyu urged the international community to facilitate Kanu's repatriation to Nigeria to face the charges against him. Well, joining us to have this conversation is Tamila Musa and uh, Emeka Okbara and also Dixon Osaje. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. And for those who do not know, Emeka Kwara is a lawyer and Samaila is the director and of Publicity Coalition of Northern Groups. I'm going to start with you, um, Samaila. This, of course, is um, a message coming from a coalition of Northerners and uh, 75 of them. Apparently, they seem to be a group of civil societies that have come together to form this merger. Should we be worried about this statement or this release by these so-called... Um, um, group of 75. Okay, you know, it was breaking at a point. I couldn't hear you well. Can you repeat your question, please? So I'm saying that this, this group of 75 and the statement that they have issued and the bounty that they put yeah. on the head of Namdi Kanu, should we as a country be worried about this group of people? They seem to be civil society organizations coming together from the north. Um, is there anything for us to worry about? Because some people have said that they might be faceless well, and some other people are so. saying that they are actually real. I don't think there's anything to, I don't think, yeah, I don't think there's, there's anything to worry about. I'm actually hearing their name for the first time, you know, but of course that's not even the issue. Uh, I'm the director of the strategy and programs for the coalition of Northern groups. And I can tell you that we will never be a part of that uh, kind of statement, you know, uh, it's it's barbaric, actually. Uh, I mean, you should leave that for the federal government to decide whether you want to they want to place a bounty on him or not. You cannot take the place of the government to begin to issue uh, those kind of uh, uh, order, you know. But of course, uh, I haven't said that. I don't even think there's any need to begin to patronize uh, some certain individual in the name of uh, Inamdi Kanu and begin to, uh, you know, make him, uh, give, him the, give him this uh, larger than life, you know, image. Uh, I mean, it's, it doesn't really call for. And I think it would, if there's anybody to worry, uh, the, the, the evil, uh, evil brothers should be the ones who will worry a lot because, uh, like I keep saying, <clears throat> uh, we have, uh, you know, a platform of all the Ohanes in Digo in, across northern Nigeria, where we're also on, on the same uh, WhatsApp platform where if they have any concern or any tension anywhere where they call our attention to it. But of course, you see, if we begin to arrogate, I mean, when certain individuals begin to arrogate powers to themselves, on what to happen per time in Nigeria, I think it's it calls for more worry. Actually, mm. you, you know, there's no there's no any uh, call for concern. And what I was saying about the Igbo, why the Igbo brothers should be more worried is because somebody is in the UK and is setting fire in Nigeria. He himself and his family are in United Kingdom. 
you know, an iPod was prescribed on 17 September 2017. It was, uh, uh, you know, pronounced a terrorist organization by the federal government of Nigeria. And we are sitting here, somebody who is in the United Kingdom is actually telling you to go to war, you know. The other time he was ranting on an audio, he was talking, the UK iPod asked him to come and account for $2 million. These are the kind of individuals who is setting war in Nigeria and people are actually following him, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, they should be more worried actually, because you see, Igbos have their structures, their investment all over, all ac across, especially in the 19 northern states. And somebody is inciting you to go to war while he doesn't have a bicycle in Kano, you know, and he's telling you to burn down the whole place. You know, you should have a rethink about that. So I think uh, from now on, end that's our take. I, I like that you have mentioned that because I was going to ask. There have been several of these kinds of statements being made lately. Um, I remember a statement that was uh, a letter that was pay posted somewhere in, um, I think, Delta State, giving the pre the governor an ultimatum of sorts. And and this uh, have these people have been referred to as opportunists. Um, if we keep having these kinds of things crop up. Um, by faceless people all across the country. Uh, is that not a sign that maybe all the regions in this country need to look within them because there might be spoilers from amongst us? Well, if, I mean, if, uh, if different people keep springing up every day, we have different uh, uh, kidnapping groups all over the place. So, and they also are issuing statements. All manner of criminals are also issuing statements. And I mean, who, who wouldn't issue a statement in the Nigeria of today? That's where we are. That's where we find ourselves. And it's quite unfortunate, actually, that we are here. You know, we have certain individuals who should be rotting in jail, who are roaming the streets. And, you know, they have the infantry to be issuing statements and be setting the country on fire. And like I said, the, 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 the platform that I said we are on with all the Ohanese Indigo across the Northern States is to foster peace a unity amongst uh, Nigerians and especially whoever is residing in northern Nigeria should feel at home. That's the essence. If they feel some kind of tension, we know the most volatile states in the northern states, you know, that we know once there's a crisis in this place, you're sure it's going to kick off in another place. So uh, we try what we're trying on our own end, even though we, I mean, we're not getting funding from the government or some kind of assistance, but we're trying what we can to say that go about your, your lawful business and nobody's going to trouble you. We, we know who the people who want to set the place on fire and we're also talking to them that, please, we don't want that kind of thing in this region, you know. Let me go to Barista. So, uh, 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 basically, you know, for, for, those, for those who are actually doing this, you know, it's, it's actually uh, yeah, the call of the government. The, the, the federal government should make sure this, uh, I mean, there's some kind of sanction on faceless individuals uh, springing up every day just to set the country on fire. Uh, but Mr. the interesting po position that Simaila has taken, uh, and I want to ask you, if just as I asked him, we're seeing a lot of these things creep up every day, and he said that it's because there's been a lapse in, um, you know, there's been a loophole in governance. Government is not stepping up to the plate to deal with these issues. Now, here we are, and a group of people are using the fact that um, Namdi Kanu is spreading hate speech. And they're saying, in fact, they're accusing him of, you know, uh, instigating attacks against Nosners in the southeast. There is some iota of truth in the fact that Nosners are being attacked in the south. But is it Namdi Kanu's fault that these Nosners are being attacked? Nigeria is faced with all kinds of, you know, situations right now in terms of insecurity. People are talking about safety on a daily basis. Lagos is having its fair share. Um, why do you think that Niger the Nigeria of today has gotten to the point that it is, um, apart from the fact that our governments keep telling us that they're doing their best to deal with the situation? Why do you think that the cracks that we've always had as a country have become more and more obvious? Yes. Um, first of all, I want to take exception to some of uh, uh, the background that has been laid um, by uh, uh, Mr. Mokra. Um, the first place, I want to say that um, the kind of rhetoric, while the ordinary person 
the average person, the average Igbo man uh, or woman may not take that route or may not totally agree with the, this kind of people. I must be bold to say that it is actually the federal government that have offered and the panel to have the symbolism he has today. I also want to say, going back to the so-called uh, um, uh, faceless northern groups, that in fact, the body language of the federal government has been encouraging such faceless groups. Now, if you recall, several times, the uh, organization known as FUNAM, Fulani Nationality Movement, um, Yeti Allah, and some other faceless groups have been coming up with a lot of threats in this country. And the federal government have been encouraging them. They have been total silent. But once Nandi Kano just says something that he cannot even enforce from thousands of miles away, people spring up, uh, the federal government will come up with it and they will encourage mainly northern groups, Fulani groups especially, or Fulani control groups, to say certain things as if it, they are now directing it at Mr. the... Mr. Okmara, let me come in and there. And, and I'm, not, I'm not playing the devil's yeah, advocate. I'm going to let Samayla... And, no, no, I just want to set something straight. When you say yeah. that the federal government is encouraging and is supporting yes. them to make statements, where in yes. those statements do you see it being signed or supported by the Ministry of Information, for example, the, the or, the, or the federal government, or Mr. Them. President. Yeah. Let's, let's, no, set no, that, no. let's set that, yeah. you know, that, that yeah, record let, straight. Let, let us dispense with that. The, the, the federal government does not need to sign a statement. There have been many statements made that have been very criminal in this country. In fact, that go to the root of our democracy. Some people have come to say that they own Nigeria. Their ethnic group owns Nigeria, own, owns Nigeria, right? They have made it openly, and the federal government never did anything, anything. A lot of, many people have come, have in this country, mainly, maybe because of where they come from, they make statements that, in fact, are criminal, that, in fact, should be, uh, should cause them to be taken, tried in court and the federal government never uttered a word. So the body language of the federal government is that there are people that are allowed to say whatever they like. And then when Nandi Kano, I don't subscribe to whatever or everything he says, but I want to also correct something. Nandi Kano has never told anybody, as far as I know, have, has not told Igbo people to go and burn things anywhere. Nandi Kano has been advocating for self-determination for the Biafran people. That is what he has been doing. That is what he has been doing. And I also want to correct the impression that uh, some people have, whenever Nandi Kano says something, they indirectly threaten the Igbo people. They remind them that they have property in the north. They have, uh, they have their people spread all over. We have begun to see such uh, statements as veiled threats against the Igbo people. And that's what they are. All right. And, I'm going uh, I'm gonna ask my question again. Uh, that statement I, I has guess... already been made now. And uh, I think we take exception to it and we think it should stop. Mr. Okwara, I'm going to ask another question um, that ties to the question I asked you earlier on, if you, even though you didn't really answer me. What have the elders in the southeast of the country done to deal with the rhetorics that are coming from Namdi Kanu? And, and the people who follow him. Yes, we know that Nigeria is divided along several lines, especially ethnic lines, but what have the leaders in the Southeast done to deal with this rhetoric? Um, how have they been able to um, change this narrative amongst their people? Because again, police officers and police stations have been targeted. INEC offices have been burned down by unknown gunmen. Um, and of course, there's an opportunity for anybody to take advantage of these opportunities that are, you know, all over the country to perpetrate acts of violence, to make certain people look bad. But if our leaders of thought have stepped up to the plate to deal with the situation, would we be having this conversation in the first instance? 
<laughs> I want to answer it this way. Um, you can see that several Igbo leaders have of recent made statements that are very clear for those who want to hear, for those who want to understand, for those who don't want to simply find a reason to castigate the Igbo people. They have come to say that, one, they would want the federal government not to fuel the situation that has given rise to the Namde Kano's rhetoric. If, if the federal government should do a balanced government, if the body language and the speech emanating from Atoll Rock and from the so-called, in quote, presidency, and from all the things they are doing, their governance, if it is fair, there wouldn't be any need at all for Nam the Kano to make those statements. And if he were to make them, he will not have comeback. He will not have people support. Okay. So I think you should throw back the book to Asoro. That is on book. One thing I want to say. You also made mention of something on non government. I was in the team up till about last week. I was in Imo State, specifically in Owere, for three weeks. And I witnessed a lot of things. I tried to go out despite the threat, despite the risk to my. I tried to go out to find out certain things myself. And I can tell you, there are a lot of meat into what you call the unknown government. And I think, I think the federal government has a larger question to answer concerning okay. the identity of the unknown government. Okay. All right. I'm going to throw the next question to Dixon Osaje. Uh, Dixon, you're a security expert, and I'm sure that you are almost sick and tired of having this conversation about the insecurity that we're experiencing in Nigeria. But um, in cases like this, like I mentioned earlier on, we've had a similar situation in Delta State where the governor was written a letter and given an ultimatum. But these were faceless people. These were categorized as opportunists. Same thing. Uh, Samila is saying that the Northern um, Coalition uh, does not necessarily know these people. And in fact, it's the first time he's hearing of them. So they're obviously cracks. They're all obviously opportunities for these sets of people to take advantage of. What does this say about... Uh, the leadership in our country and how s the touch that security agencies have over the situation that we're facing as a country. Thank you very much, Mary Ann. Uh, that is a very intelligent question uh, because uh, we need to understand that uh, uh, the federal government uh, sometimes uh, have placed to the hands of some uh, group of uh, elements that uh, think that they can, be, uh, they, they, they could be able to just uh, decide what they want to say, they want to think anything they want to think, and uh, you know. I think the federal government are not taking lead in uh, in leadership here, uh, Mary Ann. Uh, first of all, I saw the uh, 100 million dollar bounty on uh, in Abikano, and I asked myself one or two questions: If this group of people have the constitutional rights, uh, the legal rights to you know uh, place a 100 million dollar bounty or any amount of money uh, to any Nigerian uh, within uh, the country or outside the country, and uh, I think they don't have that uh, power. They don't have that constitutional backing, they don't have that legal backing. Uh, but coming to uh, your question, I think uh, the federal government are really not uh, taking the bull by the horn, you know, because uh, sometimes they play sightless in some group of people uh, who claim an act of terrorism. Like sometimes last year, uh, Mary Ann, or two years ago, uh, I think uh, Miyeti Allah uh, claimed responsibility of an attack uh, in a state, Ben State. Yeah, Ben State. I heard that very clearly on, on, the, on the international news and local news. And uh, there was nothing done by the federal government. Uh, you know, when you keep silence uh, to some group of people and you want to uh, muzzle up to some group of people, uh, you are taking a, a full departure from effective leadership. So for me, I would just advise the federal government, uh, you know, to lead. Just, they should just lead Nigerians. Just take the lead, you know. Uh, they should just uh, take the lead and not give room for any group of people uh, to be placed bouncing on fellow Nigerians. There are these guys where uh, Muhammad Shakal was uh, killing Nigerians in the, in the Northeast, killing our brothers and sisters, beheading people. None of them came out to place the bounty on uh, uh, Shakal. Why are they placing bounty on uh, uh, Inambikano? I'm not taking support of Inambikano because uh, most of these statements coming from Inambikano are uh, with all due respect uh, to the Igbo people. Uh, it's an act of terrorism. And uh, 
if we want to treat those statements, I think uh, it's treading on the part of terrorism, and that is just the truth. Um, I I'm curious, because with all the tensions that we're having in the country, whether it be in the south, in the, in the north, I mean, the southwest, they're also asking for uh, the Yoruba nation, the Odua nation. I mean, the, the, like I said, and I'll keep sounding like a break of record, we are divided on ethnic lines, on religious lines, and, and people are taking advantage of it. Now, I want to put my people on the spot here. Should we be giving attention or the light of day to these sets of people who have no background, who have no bearing? Because like Samila said, he doesn't know these people. The same thing, that our news people have carried that ultimatum uh, about governor, um, the governor of Delta State, or COA. Uh, should we be giving light to these messages? Should we even be blowing them up in the first instance? Why should these stories be making news? Because the truth is, the more that we give life to these stories, the more that we give attention to these unknown gunmen. So what about intel? I'm bringing back to you. I'm circling back to security. How do we deal with intel before these types of stories become news? Why is there no background done on these kinds of things or these statements before they become news? Because it seems like this is just raising pure alarm as to something that's not really going to happen. Uh, Mary Ann, when we talk about security, uh, security is for you to go before the loss, you know, uh, go before uh, the, the enemy, you know, don't allow the enemy, uh, you know, an opportunity to, to, to excel or escalate, just like you uh, rightly said. Uh, for me, uh, when it comes to Intel, uh, our intelligence uh, uh, mechanism here in Nigeria uh, is not effective enough because, uh, like you rightly said, we shouldn't be giving uh, uh, these guys uh, an opportunity to, you know, excel in, their, in, in publicity because publicity plays one of the biggest role in terrorism because one of the uh, fundamental uh, uh, excellence in terrorism, how they flourish, they flourish through publicity. And uh, if terrorism flourishes through publicity, uh, we should be able to have what we call a, a priority. You know, we need to prioritize uh, what goes out to the public. Just like you, you have said, Mary Ann, uh, for the past two, three years, uh, on this very station, I think I've made more than 35 to 40 appearances uh, talking about grazing animals and cows. That is a misplaced priority. Uh, we need to prioritize human life first, you know. Uh, when we have a group of people coming, giving us statements, uh, placing bounty, we have a uh, government of Delta State and, uh, and other issues from other parts of the country, that tells you that there is a failure in leadership. And there's a failure in our intelligence because our intelligence uh, mechanism, that is the DSS and the Nigerian uh, uh, Intelligence Agency, are supposed to go before this, uh, this criminal, they're supposed to go before uh, this, uh, this, this act. How would you just come on air and just declare someone wanted? You know, it's going to cause a lot of problems here in Nigeria because we are, we're having a lot of agitations. Uh, the South are agitating for Yoruba Nation. Uh, with the IPOB agitating for the uh, for for the back for, for Biafra, you know, we, we are not organized. Let me just use that word, Mary Ann. Our government is not organized, and the reason why our government is not organized, Mary Ann, is that we are just too weak, you know, to, to strike uh, some of these uh, elements that poses themselves as as a threat to the uh, survival of Nigeria. So uh, intelligence needs to back up. You know, like sometimes uh, when uh, an incident transpired, the DSS will come on board and tell us that uh, they heard that something is going to happen next time. Uh, they, you know, they don't have what we call effective management of information. We need to have an effective management of information from the DSS department, from the security agent that can be able to that can be able to go uh, before this uh, uh, criminal element, go before this uh, group of people that are terrorizing the Nigerian state. If we don't have our security agents on board, I'm telling you, it's going to be a sorry state. We're going to be in a sorry mm. state. It's, it's a regrettable situation, Mary Ann. Wow. Um, let me go back to Samaila now. Um, Osaje has brought up very interesting um, points. Now, Samaila, your group is like a pressure group, and it's also like civil society. Um, if a security person is telling us that government is not dealing with this issue at, as it should, and we are in a sorry state, Nigeria, as we speak, has... Uh, is number eight, um, or rather we are, yes, we're the number eight country in terms of the least peaceful countries in the world. That is not a good thing. We're, we're, our economy is suffering. We're looking for foreign direct investments. Who's going to come here if all that is making our headlines is killing, is bounties on people, is this people asking for secession or bandits kidnapping? Who wants to come here? 
What are pressure groups like yours doing to get our governments to come alive? Again, this government it, it does not really take lightly criticism. So what other ways do we have to explore to get the attention of governments and get them to do the job that they applied to want to do? Okay, first, first and foremost, uh, if you're conversant with, uh, you know, uh, news uh, mediums uh, around northern Nigeria, especially from Abuja down north, you will know that uh, our coalition is at the forefront of, you know, always calling out the government per time as at when you, when they are failing, when they are sleeping. We have called out the president on so many occasions. And actually around northern Nigeria, Everywhere there has been crisis, we have been there on ground, we have interfaced with the governors of those states, we have had a series of meetings with them, always calling them out. And we have said this several times, both from our press releases or radio interviews, television interviews, we have always done that. We call the spade a spade, is that the president has been sleeping. But of course, if thank God lately, maybe from the past 10 days, he granted a uh, uh, a media interview to uh, 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 Arise TV, you know, that's actually a welcome development. That what makes all these things worse is when you have a president who doesn't talk to his people, the people who he has come to serve, he's keeping mute, not saying a word. We have cited several examples world over, wherever there are incidences of killings, once the security people can really clear the, 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 the scene of the crime, you know, for, uh, uh, for immediate assessment by the president. The president of those nations move in right there to access the situation, make statement at the site of, you know, I mean, at the scene of this crime. It inspires the citizens of every nation. It encourages them that, well, it's going to get better someday. You know, so it, that's you know, the first thing to do. We need to know what are you doing? Okay. It's, it's not just enough to condemn to start issuing press statement by some, uh, you know, or media, media, media aides and all of that, that the, the president condemned social acts and that and this, you know. But of course, having said that, we have also, we have always been at the forefront of calling out that the president need to, you know, sack the service chiefs if they are mandated. Well, we have new service chiefs. In what they have called to do. We have You're new service chiefs. What's, what's the excuse now? We have new service chiefs. So what are we talking about now? Yeah, yeah. You see, it, this is the point. I will say it that time. I've said it in several interviews that give them timelines. You don't you understand? If I have a security guard get him at my gate, I give him timelines. This is what I want. If you can't achieve that, I, you are booted out. Somebody else comes in. Okay. That's the way it works. You okay. cannot have people sitting down. They know where the problems are. They know who are, you know, sleeping on duty and they are condoning them and you still let them be. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to understand that there is an emergency. Something needs to be done. There okay. is need for right. an immediate action. So, Myla, we have to go so quickly. I'm tossing my last question to Mr. Okbara. Uh, I did ask you that question earlier on about what the leaders of thought in your area are doing. But you are a lawyer uh, and you are from the southeast well, I know that the South East has always spoken about getting the short end of the stick and all of that. But um, when we seem to, there are people who feel that there eighty percent of people in the South East are sympathizers of Namdi Kanu. But if we must get what this, if the South East must get the kind of attention that it needs and the kind of development that it needs, what strategies do you have to put forward so that you can get the attention of the federal government? instead of the violence that we see engulfing the Southeast on a daily basis. You have one minute, please. Yeah. Um, um, if, um, if I had some illusion about the fitness of our president, uh, I think uh, that illusion uh, was, uh, it was, it was erased. Uh, after I watched his last two uh, interviews. And what am I trying to say by that? I think this, I don't believe the assertion that this president is weak. General Buhari is not a weak man. And even at his age, I think he is a very strong man. But I think the problem is that his focus has been wrong. 
And that has been the thing fueling the unrest in several parts of the country, including the East. Now, if, if I may use that language, if he could redirect his mind and perhaps watch, um, watch the government of this, I mean, unjustifiable lopsidedness, I think even with the little remaining time of less than two years, President Buhari will be able to do marvelously well and okay. set the country okay. on a different footing. All right. I mean, he needs to redirect himself. If he does that, I think all the agitations, you see, is the youth, mainly the youths. The youths have been mostly the supporters of Onan de Kano, the supporters of Sunday Iboho. And if you find out, if you go to the north, you see that mainly the youths have been the people these uh, bandits or so-called people have been using. Hmm. So if you are not able to redirect the energies of the youths, you create jobs for uh, people in Niger Republic with the resources here. We have to go. You do a lot of upsidedness. Then definitely you are telling the youths to follow Namde Kano, to well, follow the rhetorics of uh, Sunday Iboho and all the rest of them. Okay. Well, I want to thank you. Samaila Musa is the Director of Publicity Coalition of Northern Groups. Mecca Akbara is a lawyer and Dixon Osage is a security expert. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for this very interesting conversation. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll take a short break. Thank you all for staying with us. When we come back, we'll discuss how peaceful Nigeria is. Stay with us.